Hi there and welcome to this, our first tutorial on using RenderMan for Maya to produce a final image or possibly even a look dev image for this haunted hallway. Now the reason for using this particular scene is it's available to all of you for free on the internet. And I'll show you where right now. If you go to 3drender.com, which is not a particularly difficult name to remember, I hope, um, you'll actually find the lighting contest scenes here, okay? And Jeremy Byrne, who is a lighting TD at Pixar, has actually kindly agreed to let me use these scenes for my tutorials. So hopefully I don't do anything terribly wrong, because if I do, he'll probably see them. Um, but hopefully correct me as well. So Jeremy Byrne is literally the guy, so far as I'm concerned, who has written the book on digital lighting. Um, I've bought his book twice, the first edition, and I read it cover to cover. It was almost falling apart by the time the second edition came out. I gave the first edition to one of my students um, who was particularly interested in lighting because there's still a lot of good information either in the first or the second edition, but with these things, always good to stay up to date. So I highly recommend this book. Um, Jeremy Byrne, his website is fantastic, but the book is even better. Over the years, Jeremy Byrne has actually put together a whole bunch of scenes. So these scenes are available here, and they're basically for the use, for your own personal use, to develop ideas with lighting and to explore these online and discuss them with other people. So this is the scene which we'll be using here, and it's available in whatever format you like, but obviously I'm using Maya, so I'll be using the Maya. Okay, so these are some of the examples of scenes which have been rendered using this as a basic scene. And I quite often use this with my students to show them that similar scenes with different lighting really have a strongly different emotional impact. And yeah, there's a certain amount of different um, difference here with lensing effects and with the way in which cameras are set up but the lighting and the color and the way in which these things are handled dramatically affects the emotions so this particular exercise which we'll be doing I'm not sure exactly how long it will be because I'll be working through it with you more or less now what I want to be able to do is concentrate mostly on the lighting effects but still have some texture in here as well so I'll be working through lighting in Render from Maya. I'll probably do some texturing in Photoshop and some in Mari. So those of you who don't have Mari, don't worry about it. This scene is quite simple and could be lit entirely in, or sorry, could be textured entirely using Photoshop or using whatever tools you like. You know, it's, it's not a texturing exercise in this case. This is about lighting. One of the things I see in a lot of these scenes here is there's quite an extensive use of... Um, atmospheric light and atmospheric scattering and it's something which I haven't done in Renderman before so I will try and do that close to the end when we actually reach a result which I'm reasonably happy with. Um, also there's a lot of bounce light. Obviously there's a couple of light sources which are available to us here. There's this major window here. There's this light which is used in some of the scenes. There's also, if I should demonstrate in the scene itself, let's go in here. There's also a skylight oops, in the stairwell. If I just go to, you can look up through the stairwell here. There's a skylight there as well. So there's various different ways. There's windows coming from either side. We can use any or all of these to actually light our scene. Um, what I have done, something which I highly recommend to all my students, is before we actually get started, I have actually produced, or I've actually gone online, and I have got myself a bunch of reference. So I've stored all my reference in source, source images. Now, this is partly reference, but it's mostly inspiration. So these are things which I think will be useful to me to bear in mind, to inspire the kind of lighting which I'm looking for, and the kind of look that I'm looking for for this look dev exercise. So it's abandoned. This is a lot of this stuff is from the um, Kingston Lounge. There are other websites around like this. Um, it's slightly topical at the moment because um, 
The Last of Us video game is just out this week from Naughty Dog, and there's a lot of people going to be doing scenes very similar to this. So it's peeling paint, faded colors, water damage, um, abandoned, dusty. Always good to have a little prop here just to show the fact that it is abandoned, similar with this abandoned wheelchair here, pram, bed. Shows some humanity has been there but isn't there any longer. But a lot of it is the light and the color in these scenes is fantastic. These are all real world examples. Okay, and yes, the stuff there and quite like the materials there. So it's worthwhile getting a lot of reference. Now I only have about 50 or 60 here. In general, I would probably go for several hundred. Now what I do when I get all my reference together is rather than actually having to flick through my reference all the time, I like to make a large collage or composite of all my rendered or all of my collected materials or a bunch of the ones I select from it. Um, and what I do with that then is I make a very large image with it, which I can keep on my extra screen because I have a dual monitor setup. So this is actually quite a high res image and you see if I zoom in here, oops, I can have this set up on my second monitor and I can actually get ideas from a whole bunch of these at one time and just zoom around and literally think, oh, well, I kind of like the way that light bounces from here, from the window, and get that light coming through here also. So it's it's a way that I can actually use to be slightly more creative, the way that light bounces down here, and you get this sort of shadowing, which is maybe occlusion, maybe shadowing down here. So it's a method which I use to actually help me come up with creative ideas from the real world. It's mixing things up. It's the best way I can put it. That's the thing that I actually find very, very useful in my work. So I have that open in my second screen as I'm going through it. Now, the scene which we have available to us is reasonably good to start with, but would do with some cleaning up. So I'm not going to go through the process of cleaning up with you. I think it's something probably most people can do. If I get some requests, I will actually go through some of the cleanup. But I'll show you just the stage of the scene as it is currently. So currently, there's a lot of individual objects. You see here. OK, so there's a whole bunch of objects here. And they all have names which are difficult to deal with. And the UVs are reasonably set up, but not tremendously. Let me just have the stairs, for instance, is reasonably well set out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you for a few minutes, well, probably about an hour or so, to actually go through and tidy up some of this work. Because I like to have a tidy scene to start with. Um, it makes life easier when you're working through things. So I'm going to tidy up this scene, sort out some UVs, sort out naming conventions, rationalize the way in which things are put together and also move it back down into the center of my uh, workspace here because that makes it much easier dealing with in general. So that's what I'll be doing now. I would encourage you to download the scene from 3drender.com. Let's just go back here again. From 3drender.com, which is Jeremy Burns' website, and get started as well. We will be working our way through, and there are a series of other scenes we're working on in this tutorial as well. So let's just um let's just get this downloaded and get started on it.